the trail again and again Hacking and hunting and fishing the land Time is time we'll spend We'll take it to the Delta Welcome to Mississippi Outdoors. I'm Pamela Weaver. And I'm Kevin Meacham. Thanks for joining us. In our first story, we go to Yazoo County. The Outdoors crew is on a special youth deer hunt. Let's go. Okay, folks, we're back deer hunting again today with Cole Cheatham. Yesterday we didn't see much, but this morning we're gonna try a little something different. We're gonna try to rattle him one up. We've got a decoy to try to get him off the attention of him because he's gonna have to sit down and stand up. Are you ready for it, Cole? Yes, sir. Wonderful, well, let's get out there so we got late. I'm 17 years old. I have what's called Duchenne muscular dystrophy. I was diagnosed at age seven. When we were first diagnosed, most of them don't live past 19 years old. You know, fortunately, Cole has been blessed. Uh, you know, he's still walking, uh, still doing good. It really affects the way you walk. Most boys are confined to a wheelchair around 12 years old with the condition. As you see, I'm not. <laughs> All right, folks, we're gonna have this right here set up for Cole where he can shoot. We got a decoy, then I've got this mirror blind on the golf cart. It's gonna keep it where he can have a little movement. Think about all this. Oh no, ready to get out there. You gonna do anything today? I hope so. sides because our wind's kicking down there. So if we get on the sanctuary field side, that means our wind's blowing out to the field, not through the woods. I'm telling you, I think it's hurting us bad. Unfortunately, the wind has swapped on us, so we're gonna go around and get back and come in from the other side of the woods because all we're blowing the deer out. So basically, let's, let's go on.
folks, we uh, had a good setup in there. Uh, had a small buck come in behind us. We almost perfect, they're just, they're not moving. Um, so I think this afternoon we're supposed to go to a food plot. I'm pretty sure we're guaranteed a dough. <laughs> we hope they just have not been moving. So we'll see, stay tuned. We're supposed to go eat some breakfast. You hungry, Cole? Heck yeah. That's all he's been talking about, food. Well, let's go. I'm hungry too. It's really actually cool how I got started. I was with a good friend of ours, Keith Gaines. Mom and Daddy were out of town and he took me hunting. He lined me up on a spike and I shot him and killed him. That was my first deer. And we wound up being in my, old, my granddad's old stand and we didn't know it. And so it was really cool. All right guys, we got a new field we're gonna hunt this evening. We didn't see much out of the other ones. Uh, it's got a nice food plot. Um, they just cut the corn, which is great. So, unfortunately, Mark, uh, Cole's dad, isn't with us. So, let's get hunting. You ready? Yes, sir. We got a turkey out in our food plot right now. It's a, it's a gobbler. He's been having two more with him, so hopefully they'll walk out. They're always a, a joy to watch. And they can see real good. We also have a deer behind us that just walked out. Well, folks, it's been a long week. We've been rattling early part of the week. Then we had Cole here come join us. Uh, it's been slow. The deer have not been moving well at all. Today, he almost got it done. How did you feel about today, man? I mean, it was close, wasn't it? Was, it? it was fun. We almost killed the deer. Maybe I'll get to come back sometime. Oh, you're, def you're an honorary member. How about that? Sounds good to me. Good morning. We're in Holmes County, and we're just get ready to go deer hunting. It's below freezing, and here we go. We're going to a pine plantation. It's an old water tank. We actually built a little platform in it. Me and Cole, Mark, and the cameraman will be able to fit in there. We got us a heater. Hopefully, stay warm. We're going to be looking for a buck, but I think Cole will settle with a doe this morning if one comes out. So, wish us luck. See any blood and I don't see a sign of her.
Well, that's why we call it hunting. I didn't find any blood. I circled two different spots. Didn't see anything. Well, it means I missed her. Means you missed her. But you got you one yesterday. Yes, sir. Put the smoke down on her. I think three came out. I was I slept most of the time. Just keep your eye in there, because when you keep taking your eye out, you gotta find her again. Then a few does came out and Randy told me to shoot the biggest one and that was the one in the middle, so I got on her and pulled the trigger and she fell down. Killed me a good doe yesterday. Five year old doe. Killed one deer this year. That's better than none. <laughs> he loves to get out in the woods and hunt and uh, he would do this every day if he could. He's a great kid, I enjoyed hunting with him. Did you know that money spent on Mississippi hunting and fishing license is just like an investment? The Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries and Parks uses money from license sales to enhance hunting and fishing, like providing public hunting opportunities on wildlife management areas, advising private landowners on deer and habitat management, providing public fishing opportunities on state lakes, and operating fish hatcheries for stocking public lakes and streams. So make an investment in the great outdoors Buy your Mississippi hunting and fishing license today. For over 70 years, Mississippi Outdoors magazine has served the readers of the Magnolia State. The magazine contains interesting features such as wildlife photography and soul lunar tables. Subscriptions to the magazine are very inexpensive, and when you subscribe, you'll receive six bi-monthly issues containing articles on hunting and fishing in the state, public lakes, state parks, and our wildlife management areas. For more information, call our toll-free number at 1-888-874-5785. Tree stand falls account for over 90% of Mississippi's hunting accidents. The tree stands involved in most hunting accidents are the lock on the climber, and the ladder stand. Before using these stands, check your straps, cables, and chains. New straps are considered the cheapest life insurance policy you can buy. Use a pull-up rope to haul your gear, bow, or gun up to the stand. Always use a full body harness when hunting from an elevated stand. Always attach a safety harness to the tree or use your lifeline when climbing. Remember, when hunting Mississippi's wildlife management areas, a hunter is required by law to wear a full body harness when hunting from an elevated stand. The Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries and Parks wants all hunters to have a successful and enjoyable hunting season, but above all else, a safe return home. The Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries and Parks is proud to offer two world-class shooting facilities, Turcotte Shooting Range near Jackson and McHenry Shooting Range near Wiggins. Our shooting ranges are safe, affordable, and a great way to sharpen your skills or introduce someone new to shooting sports. We offer rifle, pistol, archery, sporting clay, skeet, and trap ranges, as well as a five-stand range over water. Learn more at mdwfp.com. In our next story, we're headed to Tishomingo County. The outdoors crew is bass fishing at Pickwick Lake. I got a fishing line. There he is. You're a professional. College bass, bass fishing is one of the fastest growing collegiate sports <laughs> in the southeast, and Mississippi's no exception. Fishing with us today is Ty Cox. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> and, uh, we're going to give Ty a chance to show us on Pickwick what he's learned while he was in college. Ty, appreciate you fishing yes, with us today. Anytime. Uh, we've got some fish on right now, and uh, we're hopefully going to uh, catch quite a few and see what Ty learned in college. Ty, it's first thing this morning. Uh, everybody always asks, 
you know, what did you throw in? What are you starting with? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about why we're starting with these boats? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm bad about pulling up on these schools here at Pitwick, and the yeah. first thing I'll throw is a big crankbait because okay. sometimes when you do get on the fire up on it, you can you can catch 15, 20 pounds like it's nothing. And then if they usually don't bite it, I'll just start dragging something, try to get, if they don't want fire easy, just drag a worm down there, usually Talk get a bite. Mm -hmm. Okay, good yep. deal. Well, let's get after it. All right, sounds good. Fish on. That's what they was doing yesterday. They were hitting it on the first yeah. drop, first fall. Is it a stripe or a bass? That's a bass. Ain't a bad one. Right, good start. About two pound or two and a half. Tennessee River, Pickwick Lake, largemouth bass. Uh, hit that big spoon. She was hungry this morning. We've got some weather coming in later. Uh, we know it's coming. Uh, but typically when you have a change in pressure, the fish start biting. So we're going to take what Ty has learned fishing all over the southeast with Itawamba Community College bass fishing team and put it to the test smaller fish because <laughs> they're all fun that spoon might be the, the deal summer, this morning i just got bit strike, strike. that's what's probably hitting your, your swim bait yeah i just got bit all right this is a white bass uh catch them a lot out here if you're catching white bass i don't know you know i like to be catching mm -hmm. white bass that means i'm around bait uh which means a large mouth is going to be there good sign they're here you know, Ty, the south wind, we like it because it keeps us a little cool. But, oh, yeah. You know, fishing these offshore places, it just makes things tougher on Ty to keep us in a, uh, on the spot we're trying to fish. I don't like fishing the north wind on this lake at all because a lot of times they'll be pulling a lot of current, and the way this river flows, if there's a north wind, the current and the wind will be butting up against each other. And, uh, man, that causes for the river to get rough and dangerous big time. All right, we've caught several fish on the big spoon right off the bat, throwing active moving baits, trying to get active fish. And uh, before we leave a spot, you know, Ty suggested we slow down. Uh, he's throwing a, a big bumper, shaking. big big thunder worm or something, just a straight tail worm. I'm throwing a Carolina rig, fishing it on the bottom, trying to catch fish that may not be as active. I started tournament fishing when I was about 11. Tournament fishing? Yeah. Good gosh. Uh, I'm 20 now, so about nine years. Okay, and, and I'm, I'm assuming your dad introduced you to fishing? Mm -hmm, he did, he did. What made you decide to keep doing it when you got to college? I've always been around college fishing. Uh, he fished high school, and being my parents with this rod company, we sponsored Mississippi State, Clemson, uh, La Tech, just several colleges, and I've always been around the college fishing when I was not when I was still in high school, and I just always knew from the getting go when I got to college I wanted to college wanted to fish. I wanted to do it. Fish. It's a keeper. Good. That'd be a good start. And a bad one. No. Oh, Two and three quarter. Yep. He got my bait. Tie. Oh, they get you bait? He got my worm. Nice fish. You know, 15 inch, we've got a 15 inch minimum up here at Pickwick. This fish would actually qualify as a keeper if we were uh, fishing a tournament today. Uh, healthy fish, probably going to weigh two and a quarter. Again, uh, fishing a little slower, trying to uh, pick off a few fish before we change spots. How in the world do you balance all this fishing with class time and taking a full load of classes? I can promise you, it's not. It's, it's not the, easy. Okay. Oh. Uh, because when I was in school, I didn't have a whole lot of extra time there to, uh, yeah. you know, spend traveling fishing. As far as balancing the fishing schedule, I take three in class, like go to a classroom. Yeah, sitting in the classroom. And then I take two or three online classes, and. Man, when you're off to a tournament, it ain't going to hang out in the parking lot with your friends and talking. I mean, there's a lot of times you get back from pre-fishing, you go in the hotel room, and you hit the books and study. And, yeah. And it, it takes getting used to saying no to the fun stuff and going. Making yourself. Yeah, do making yourself study. Fish on. Good one. A lot of people ask you, what kind of tackle do you use? Yes, sir. 
You throwing a worm. What are you, uh, what are you throwing? What are you throwing that worm on? Worm on. Yeah, I'm throwing it on a Strike King Magnum jig head. It's basically a big three quarter ounce shaky head. Okay. And uh, straight tail worm. Straight tail worm. I'm throwing a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks what, like I need to be throwing what, a spoon. What pound test line? Uh, you know, a lot of people when they get up here on these river ledges, they think I'm kind of different. Yeah. A lot of these people, they'll throw 20, 17. Man, I don't throw nothing no bigger than 15. Okay. What rod and reel are you using? Yeah, I'm using on this big shaky head. I'm using a it's a hammer rod, seven six, extra heavy. Okay. And uh, on that re on the reel, it's a Daiwa Tatula, and I like and I use the eight to one gear ratio. That on the thumper. My old big worm. Thund a thunder worm. Nice fish. Yeah, ain't a bad. I'm gonna come in front. There you go. Now you learn. That's a keeper. Yeah. It won't be cold fish. We won't get rid of it by the end of the day, but probably a two pounder. Yep. They're down there. How much have you seen it grow just in the few years that you've been fishing in high school with a high school team or fishing with Itawamba college team? When we first, when I first started around the college fishing, an average tournament would have 100 boats. Okay. Uh, which we think is big. But yeah, which is big to most people. Um, we fished one at Kentucky Lake this year that had 260 something in it. I mean, it, it's doubled, more yeah, than doubled. Yeah. I mean, I fished BFLs on pit week against, you know, all the locals. And I'll tell anybody right now, the, tough, the toughest competition I fished against has been on the college series. I mean, really? I mean, them boys, they know how to do it. Mm -hmm. Another decent little keeper. Just another keeper. How it cooked on the outside of the mouth. Look at that, look at that, what does that tell you? 14 and three quarters. What do you think? He wouldn't mm. be a keeper, but he sure was fun to yeah. catch. Very nice, keeper, keeper. Very good fish. Now that, 15 inch mm. minimum on Pickwick, that's a keeper. Ain't a bad one. That's a good fish. All right with your job. As an administrator? Tell me what's wrong <laughs> with this fin there. Genetics, I mean, you know. They uh, ain't all gonna look the they same. They all look the same. I got you. Fish on, got him. look at him jump. He tried to eat that big plum apple worm. He tried to. I had a hit before him. Not a keeper, but always fun to catch. Good fish. I think. Fish on. Take your time, take your time. Felt like a good one you bit, though. They all good. Keeper. He's way out there. <laughs> They lose it. That one any better? No. Nah. You got his attention that time. Maybe they're gonna get a little better, folks. Two and a half tie? Yeah, probably two and three quarter. We'll let him go in easy. Thank you, Mr. Bass. Hey folks, it's been a great morning on Pick Week with collegiate angler Ty Cox. Ty, big shout out yes, to you man. and Hammer Rod. Hey man, I appreciate for having it. us here today. Yes, sir. I appreciate y'all uh, having us. You know, the fishing was, was okay this morning. We were able to catch a few fish, and I wish we could keep fishing, but uh, if you can see behind me, right here at J.P. Coleman State Park, we're either getting off the water or it's gonna, we're gonna get wet. Yeah. See y'all outdoors.
Hey, that's all the time we have for this week. Hope you enjoyed the show. Join us again next time for more exciting adventures. Until then, I'm Pamela Weaver. And I'm Kevin Meacham. See, See you outdoors. outdoors.